and welcome to Connected Falkirk's first ever Halloween Live Scratch Code Along Challenge. My name is Lauren and I'm part of the Connected Falkirk team and today we're going to introduce you to some exciting Halloween activities, hence why my Memoji is dressed up in suitable Halloween costumes in the image here. So this is going to be a really hands-on session, so please make sure you've got your iPads on your desk ready to go. Are you ready? Okay, let's make a start. So today we are going to focus on some coding fun, but if you'd like some other fun digital Halloween activities, look at our Connected Falkirk blog for last year's challenge, which involved using markup to create Halloween costumes. A lot of schools got involved last year and had a really great time doing this particular challenge, so we'd really recommend doing it if you didn't already. So what are we aiming to do in this video? Well, the first thing that I want to do is a quick activity where you guys are gonna learn what an algorithm is. We'll then write, um, use and debug algorithms as well. Then we'll get on to the main event, which is coding a Halloween game in Scratch before I send you all away to Tinker to improve your games. Does that sound like fun? Brilliant, right, let's get started. So this first part is all about instructions. You are going to follow some instructions from me to draw a crazy character. So for this first activity, we are going to use the Notes app. So on your iPad, I need you to go to the main screen and then go into Notes and then create a new note by hitting the button in the top right hand corner that looks like a little bit of paper with a pencil on it. Here, what you're going to do is you're going to tap and then you are going to tap the button at the top that looks like a pencil with a circle around it and that's going to bring up the markup tools. You can choose whatever colour you want to use, whatever tool you want to use, but you are going to use this to then draw the character as I describe it. Now don't start just yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some instructions and you're going to follow those instructions exactly. Now I need you to listen really, really carefully because these instructions I'm going to give you are highly detailed. Now I trust you all, you're all going to get this bang on correct first time. If you have a one-to-one -one iPad, please do this by yourself and don't let anyone beside you peek at your answer. If you're in a shared device environment, please make sure other groups don't see you're working. Remember, please follow my instructions exactly. So the first thing I would like you to do is to draw a triangle for the body of the crazy character. Next, I would like you to add three eyes. The third instruction is I would like you to add wings. And finally, I would like you to add four legs. So running through those instructions again, I want you to draw a triangle for the body, add three eyes, add wings, and add four legs. Pause the video here while you complete that, and then when you're ready, play again. Okay, now I know that everyone who has come along to this or watching this video in um, this session today will have the exact same crazy character in front of them just now on their note. So let's have a wee look at them. So when I get to one, I want you to show your crazy character to your classmates or the other group. Three, two, one. Hmm. I see lots of people that don't look like they have the same thing. That's really weird. Okay, I'm gonna show you mine and everyone should probably look like this, shouldn't it? So this one here on the left-hand side in the little picture. Oh, okay, I didn't expect that. But I wanted all of the wings to look like that. And I wanted it to be a triangle with the eyes coming out of the top on these little stalks as well. And I wanted there to be four duck legs all at the bottom. So how did this happen? I'm sure that that was a foolproof plan and my instructions were excellent before. Okay, so here is an algorithm or the set of instructions that I gave you. What do we think went wrong? Have a quick chat in your classes please just now and then we'll get some answers. So hopefully you said that my instructions weren't good enough 
they didn't have enough detail in them. So what could I do to improve them? Again, have a quick chat, please, in your class, either with your shoulder partner or your group, or as a whole class discussion with your teacher. So what you just did is called debugging. Now debugging might sound fancy, but it's basically just editing. You'll debug things loads in your day-to-day -day life and in your classes. So our output, your pictures, wasn't what I wanted you to have from my instructions or my algorithm. So we need to edit it and change it to make it better. So I think I probably could have added a little bit more detail or maybe have been a bit more precise. So how could I have done that? Well, probably I would have added in some extra words, like how big I wanted things to be. So maybe I could have said that I wanted a big triangle for the body and I wanted it to be pink. Or I could have said, instead of just add three eyes, that I wanted those eyes to be on stalks and little squiggly lines. And I wanted those to be at the top of the triangle rather than uh, maybe on the sides or at the bottom. I then asked about wings, but I said add wings. I didn't say how many wings and I didn't say what type of wings. So I actually really wanted bat wings and I wanted them to be blue and I wanted them to be added one on each side and one at the back. So I could have said that in my instructions as well. Finally, I said to add four legs. OK, but where was I going to add those four legs and what colour were they going to be and what type? Here, they were actually little duck legs and I wanted you to add all four of them at the bottom in a row. So I could have improved my algorithm and made it look more something like this. Now, obviously, I could have included a lot more detail here, but the more detail that you can include, the easier it will be to understand. Now, all of these things have to be done by coders and programmers all the time. People, actually, people do uh, coding for a living, often spend most of their time debugging and fixing issues with their code rather than making the code in the first place. So this is a really, really important skill and it's important that you don't give up. Um, it's absolutely fine if something doesn't work first time or doesn't get the output that you thought it might first time. You just need to go back and edit it a little bit and make it better. So an algorithm might be a new word, okay, we've just learned probably, and it's basically just that set of instructions or rules to get something done. Now, I'm going to give you some time to create your own algorithm or set of instructions for your own crazy Halloween character. I want you to make the algorithm or set of instructions in a new note. So in this new note, you could type it. So I could put in here, take it off um, drawing, and I could type instead and I could say number one and give my first instruction. So that's just one way to do it. Or you could use dictation as well. So if you're maybe not as quick at typing um, or you don't want to type, um, you could basically use dictation. So dictation to use it um, or voice to text as it's also called. You basically look at your keyboard and on the left hand side of the space bar um, is a little microphone. If you type There, you just tap it to finish, and that's a much, much quicker way of getting your instructions down on paper. Now with this, I would like you not to draw a picture. You might have in your head, just like the monster does here, exactly what he wants to make instructions for, but what I don't want you to do is draw a picture of it because the point of these is that we're gonna swap them afterwards and you're gonna see if your instructions are good enough that someone else can draw what is in your head. So just keep that picture in your head of what you want it to look like and try and make your instructions as detailed as possible. Teachers, please feel free to pair people up or create a class one instead, depending on the needs of your class. Think along as you're doing it, which details are important, which ones aren't, how can you make sure that someone following your instructions can do it exactly? So pause the video here and try and write instructions and notes or an algorithm um, for your crazy Halloween character. Okay, hopefully we've got all of our instructions. The next step is to name your crazy character. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to do that. And once you've got your name, you can put it on your note as well as the heading if you'd like to. Perfect, so now we have a name and we have an algorithm to create your crazy character. Well done. Now you're gonna swap with someone else. If you're in a group creating the algorithm together on one device, swap with another group. I want you to read the instructions and draw the picture on the note underneath. 
I'll give you a few minutes to do that if you pause the video so you'll read and then just underneath use the drawing tools to draw what those instructions tell you to do. On you go. Okay, now I'd like you to pass it back and see if they drew what you had in your head. Did they? Was it right? Were there things that you maybe could have improved in your own instructions to make it easier for them to follow? Think why did they draw what they did? Just like when we're coding, we need to think why did the program do that? Why wasn't it maybe what I expected? You should always be asking lots of questions like this when you code and it's a good thing and it's going to make you a better programmer. We're always going to have to keep going back and revising what we've done um, and we want to make sure that we can do that quite well. Okay, so now that we know what our algorithm is, our main part of the session today is going to be coding a Halloween themed game and here it is. So in my game, if I open it up and press play at the top, I use my finger to move my bat around and every time I see an apple, I want to try and collect it as fast as I can. And as I collect it, you can see in the top left hand corner, it updates my score. Now you'll also notice the background is changing because these are the different levels. So there's five different levels and we're going to go through each one and I'm going to try and collect as many apples as I can. When I get to the end, my game's just going to stop and I can no longer move my bat and that's the game done. So I managed to get 28 points there. What we are going to do today um, is you are going to code this game from scratch using scratch. And we're going to see what high score you can get later on. So to do this, we're going to use scratch, as I said, and I want you to follow along with me and I want you to open Safari. So if you go onto your iPad, open Safari and open a new tab and just type in scratch. The first website that comes up is going to be Scratch, which is mit.edu, and you're going to click that to open it. Now, I'm signed in. You do not need to be signed in here. I know some of you will also have the app as well. Um, I think the app looks mostly the same, um, but if you want to use the Safari version so that it's exactly the same as what I'm doing, then please feel free. That might be the easiest way to do this. Um, but if you want to use the app, absolutely fine, but just be aware it might look slightly different to my one. Now, when I'm on here, on the top left-hand side, beside the Scratch logo, we're going to click the button that says Create. And that's going to say Creating Project. And it'll open up our main page here. Now, on Scratch, there are lots of different kind of sections here. So on the left-hand side, if you've never used Scratch before, um, I'm in my Coding tab. So there's three tabs along the top, but I'm in the Code one. And down the left-hand side, there are these different menus that are all named. And in each of them, there is coding blocks that we are going to use. So this is where we do all of our coding. To code something, we basically just drag a block out um, here. And then if we don't want it, we just drag it back in and get rid of it. Um, but it's this little stage in the middle here where we put all of our code that we're going to run. On the right hand side of the screen, you will see that there is already our little cat, so Scratch uh, Cat, which is our first sprite. So anything that we use in the game, like the apple or the bat, are going to be sprites that we are going to put in here and we're going to name, and all of the code is going to be underneath them. So you can see that in the middle section here, you can see there's the cat at the top right hand side, um, and that, that cat um, is basically a little bit kind of opaque, um, and that's because we're working on that cat at the moment. If I added a different character, please don't do this though at the moment, like the balloon, you can see when I move between these, that middle bit, it changes from cat to balloon and it tells me which one I'm coding at the moment. Now I'm going to delete that by hitting the little delete there um, and we're basically going to use this to build our program. Now that's how we're going to do it if you're wanting to do this completely from scratch. If you've used scratch before and are quite confident, um, you're going to be able to follow along me with me from this blank template. That's brilliant. But if you think you might struggle um, to keep up or you haven't used scratch before, I've made a version of this game where you can basically have some starting bits to use. So if you want to do that, can you scan the QR code at the minute? 
this version that I've made, um, you can basically remix it so you can edit it. Um, and what it already has is it already has all of the blocks out of their menus in the right places. And it's already got all of the sprites set up as well um, so that they're all ready to go. So it just makes things a little bit easier. So classes and individual pupils, you can decide which one works best for you, either following along with me from the beginning or scanning the QR code and using some of the blocks and sprites that are already there and set up. So before we start coding our actual game, it's really important when you start planning your code that you basically start you, when you're starting from scratch, you actually plan it out a little bit. So as a coder, you usually sketch out your algorithm or set of instructions that you want to do, and you normally go through this and kind of tick it off as you go. So if I go back into notes and I go to my Halloween algorithm here, this is what I sketched out before I made my game. OK, so I've said I want to do a Halloween algorithm. I've thought about the three main parts that I want to code. So I want to have a character, which in this case will be the bat. I want a prize, which in this case is going to be the apple. Um, and then I also want different backgrounds and different levels as well. So all of those three things I need to go through step by step and basically build them. Then what I've said is that for the character of the bat, I want it to appear when the game starts and I want it to always follow my finger. For the prize or the food, I want it to appear when the game starts. I want it to disappear whenever I'm touching it. And then I want it to reappear somewhere new. And I also want to change or look at how quickly that happens. Is it going to be every half a second that a new apple appears? Or am I going to change that a little bit? And I also need to add one point every time I do that. I also want the background or levels to change every time as well, um, at least five times. And then I want to have a game over sound that will play at the end as well. So that's my little instructions I've come up with. And whenever you're about to make a game or try and code something in Scratch or in something else, it's really, really good if you just sketch out some ideas of what you want to do. It really, really does help. So I'm going to keep coming back to this as I go through to make sure that I'm building my game properly and focusing on each of those bits. OK, so let's go back into Scratch then and let's start coding. So in here, the first thing that I want to do is I want to focus on the backgrounds. Now, on the right hand side here at the stage, if I click this, it's going to highlight it. So in purple over on the right hand side at the bottom, you're going to see backdrops and it's going to say it has one already, but it's a white backdrop, which I'm really not fussed on. So I want to change these to some Halloween ones. So if I click the button at the bottom of the screen on the right hand side, you'll get a little menu that pops up. And there's lots of options here. You can draw your own backgrounds. You can upload your own ones from the Internet if you find ones you really want. But what we are going to do today to make it really simple is we're just going to tap the little magnifying glass. So if you tap that button and then tap the magnifying glass to choose a backdrop. Now, if we look through all of these backdrops that are available, we want to find ones that we want as our levels for our Halloween game. Now, it's completely up to you what you do as your backdrops. I'm going to choose ones that are quite Halloween themed, um, but you can choose any of them. But you need to choose five for me, please. So I'm going to start choosing my five. You can either go for the same ones or you can choose any of the other ones that are available. So I'm going to go for woods and it takes me back to the start. I'm then going to hit that button again and the little magnifying glass again. I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to go for the witch's house as my second going to do the same thing again and I'm going to go for the castle. Same again, different castle. And finally, I'm going to go through one more time. I need to choose one more level because that's four that I've got so far. I'm going to go for the night city. So can you do that for me now, please? Pause the video and select your five backdrops that you'd like to use. Okay, once you've done that, you'll notice that it does say six backdrops because it's still included that one that was white. So on the left hand side of your screen where it says code, there's another tab that says backdrops. If you tap that, you'll see your five down the side here. Now the top one is going to be that blank one and we want to get rid of it. So if you tap it and then there's a little bin with an X in it, if you tap that, that'll delete it. And now you can see it just says five backdrops. So that's absolutely perfect. If you've already scanned the QR code that I put up, you'll already have your backdrops ready to go. OK, is everyone with me so far? Perfect. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose a character. 
So our characters or our things that we can interact with within Scratch are called sprites and they're right beside the backdrop bit. So if we look down here, there's already my little cat sprite, but I'm going to delete this. So again, just tap it and then delete because we don't really want the cat. What I want is I want my bat. Now to get this, I'm going to then hit the little cat with a plus above it on the bottom right. And again, you can upload different ones if you want to. You can draw them using the little paintbrush. But at the moment, we're going to use that search function. So the little magnifying glass. Now, there's lots and lots and lots of different sprites here. I think to make it easiest, it would be best if you choose the bat as well. So that when I'm talking about the bat um, as we go through the code, it just makes things a little bit easier for you to follow. However, if you've had some experience with Scratch before and you're quite happy that you'll remember that whatever you've chosen is the bat in my example, then you can choose a slightly different one. But I'm going to select the bat. So that's me got my character. Next, I want something for the bat to catch in my game. So again, I'm going to choose another sprite. So I'm going to go back to that little uh, cat button, go to the magnifying glass. And there's lots of different things here that you could choose. I mean, I was going to go for donuts or something else, um, but I'm going to just choose an apple just so that it matches. It's a fruit bat, so it wants to eat apples. So I'm going to choose apple as my second one. Again, if you're quite experienced with Scratch, feel free to choose something else, but you don't want to get them mixed up. You need to make sure that you remember which one is meant to be the bat in my example and which one's meant to be the apple, because otherwise things will get a little bit confusing as we go down the line. So just to go through that again, what we should now have is five backdrops on the right hand side. We should have a bat and we should have an apple or variations of those things. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start actually coding behind these things to start creating our game, because at the moment, our game doesn't do anything. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start coding. So in the bat, we're going to start coding. Now, at the moment, this would be a mistake to start coding at the minute in the middle, because as you can see, there is a little apple icon, which means I'm currently clicking on the apple and I'm coding behind that. So I want to make sure that I tap the bat and it's the bat that's definitely selected. So you can see there on the wee picture, it's every time I tap it, you can see a little square around the bat. And you can also see in the middle, there's that little bat in the top right hand corner. So that means I'm in the right place. So going back to my algorithm, the first thing I said was I want when the game starts for the bat to always follow my finger. So that means I need to have it when the game starts. Now, when a game starts in Scratch, you can see over here on the right hand side, there's the preview pane. To start the game, I hit that little green flag. So what I want to do is on the left hand side in code, I'm going to go down to the one that says events. And in events, that top one says when the green flag is clicked. So I want to drag that over into the middle. OK, now that means that when I click that green flag, I want something to happen. So what do I want to happen? Well, I want the bat to follow my finger. Now, to do that, I don't want it just to follow my finger once. I want it to do it forever, the whole way through the game. So I need to go to control, which is the other one that's a kind of orange color just below here. And there's quite a lot of options in here, but I want to go for this block that says forever. And I want to drag that over. So when the green flag is ticked, so when we start the game, I want my bat to forever do something. So I said I wanted it to follow my finger. So that's a motion. So I want to go into the blue section and I want it to go to the one that says go to random position. OK, so I'm going to drag this over and you need to click it in. It can't just be sitting out here. You need it to go in the middle of that forever block because I want it to keep following my finger forever. So if you drop that in, you should have those three parts together. Now, I don't want it to go to a random position. If I play my game, you're going to see what happens with that. That doesn't look right, does it? It just keeps going to random places and that's awful. So then I'm going to pick stop. So what have I done wrong here? Well, I've put random position at the moment. I want to tap where it says random position and I want it to go to where my mouse pointer is. Now, what I mean by mouse pointer is in a computer, it'd be where your mouse pointer is going, but we are using an iPad, so it's where our finger is going. So we tap mouse pointer and that should mean that when I click the green flag, if I move my finger over my screen, the bat follows my finger. Okay, so you can test it, and that's really important 
test your code, make sure that it works. So if you hit the green flag and then move your bat, it should just follow your finger. And when you're done, just tap that red button at the top to stop it. Hopefully everyone has managed to do that. So we've done our first thing on our algorithm. We've got our bat working and when the game starts, it's always going to follow my finger. The next thing on my algorithm list is trying to make the apple disappear whenever the bat hits it. So we're going to go back into Scratch and this time I'm going to come out of my bat and I want to go into the apple. So if you tap the apple for me, please. Now again, I would like from the start of the game, any time the bat touches my apple, I want it to disappear. So I need to go back to events again. So on the left hand side, the yellow menu, and I want to take that when green flag clicked button and drag it out into the middle again, because I want it to start at the same time the game starts. Now, I don't want my apple to disappear. Okay, I want my apple to show itself. So first thing that I need to do is I need to go to looks, which is the purple menu. I need to scroll down and I need to find the block that says show because I want it to be on show when the game starts. Okay, so it's showing itself. Then what I want it to do is every moment in the game where the bat touches it, I want it to then disappear. So because it's the whole way through the game, I want it to do it forever. So in the event section, or control, sorry, section again, so in that orange section, I'm going to drag that forever block and put it underneath show. <laughs> then I always want it forever. If the bat is touching the apple, then it disappears. So... I need something called an if statement. So if this is happening, then I want this other thing to happen. So I'm going to go for this block that says if then, and I'm going to put that in the middle of that forever block. Don't put it underneath. If you put it underneath, it won't work. It needs to go in the middle. So when I click the green flag, I want the apple to show. And then throughout the game, I want it to disappear if it touches. So I now need to go to the sensing menu, which is the one in light blue. And I want to find the top one that says touching. And I want to drag this one into this little box. Now be careful, I don't want it in the middle. I want it to go in this box here beside the if. And I don't want it to be when it touches the mouse pointer. I want it to be when it touches the bat. So I'm going to tap the little drop down menu and select bat. So if it touches the bat, what do I want it to do? I want it to disappear or to hide. So I'm going to go to looks, scroll down and drag over the hide one. OK, so let's try that on my wee one over here. So I'm going to go full screen. I'm going to go play. I've got my apple. I've got my bat. And when it touches, it hides it. Now, what is our problem here? It's doing what I said I wanted it to do. Nothing is coming back, is it? There's no apple now. So I need the apple to reappear again. So what I want to now do is I want to go into control and I want to go to this block at the top that says wait one second. And I'm going to drag that in and put it under hide. Now, I don't really want it to wait for a whole second. That's maybe a little bit long. So where it says 1, tap it and type in 0 0.5. So it's going to wait 0 0.5 seconds. And then what? What do I then want to do? I want it to show itself. Okay, so we're going to go to looks and we're going to go to show. So let's give this a wee try. Start. Okay, now what's my problem now? Just showing up in the same position every time, isn't it? That's not very fun. So if I go back to my code, I've not told it to show up in a different location. I've just told it it needs to show itself again. So we want to go to the blue section, motion, and we want to grab this block that says go to random position. And I want to put it before it says show because I want the apple to move to a different location and then I want it to show itself. OK, so let's try this and see if it works. Yay, that's working. 
So every time the bat touches it forever throughout the game, it's going to disappear and go to a random location and then show itself again. Perfect. Okay, I think our apple and our bat are coded and ready to go. Can you make sure that you've got both of those done? And if not, can you pause the video here, please, until we move on to the next section, until we're ready to go. Okay, so we have now coded our bat and we have coded our apple and our game's looking good so far, but it's just staying with the same background every time. So what I would like to happen is that the background changes as we go through the game. So I want each level to have a different background. So because of this, I want to tap on stage on the right hand side so that it's the background that I see on that top right hand bit in the middle. So there's a little background picture and it's been highlighted. Again, when I start the game, I want to show a certain background. So I'm going to go to events, back to my when the green flag is clicked and drag that out. And the first thing I want it to do is I want to change the look. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to say switch backdrop to and I can choose by choosing the drop down which menu or which uh, backdrop I want. So I want the witch's house to be first. You can select any one that you want. It doesn't matter. Okay, so when it starts, it's going to be the witch's house that comes up first. But I want it to change. I want it to change maybe every five or six seconds to a different uh, backdrop. How am I going to do that? Well, I've got five backdrops, so I'm going to need it to change backdrop five times. Okay, so I want it to change five times, five repeats. So to do that, I'm going to go to the orange menu, the one that says control. And there's a block that says repeat 10. So I'm going to drag this over. Now, I don't want this to repeat 10 times. I want it just to do five levels, the five backdrops, five times. So I'm going to change that to five. What do I want it to do when it gets to five seconds? Or what do I want it to do um, each time it repeats? Well, I want it to wait for six seconds for the level to be done. And then I want it to change to a new background. So I need to go to that control one again and that bit that says wait and drag that over. And I don't want it just to wait for one second. I want it to wait for six seconds. That's how long I want my level to be. After those six seconds, I want it to go to the next backdrop. So I'm going to go to looks again, the purple one, and I'm going to add next backdrop underneath the wait, not at the bottom under repeat, but underneath the wait six seconds one. Then that should be us. And at the end of that, I would like the game to stop once we've gone through those five levels. So I'm going to go to control, scroll down, and drag this stop all one over. So let's give that a shot. So if I go full screen over here and I start by clicking my flag, the witch's house comes up first. I can start capturing my apples. And after six seconds, there we go. It goes on to a different backdrop. And it's gonna keep doing that every six seconds until we get through all five. And then it's gonna stop. Perfect. So, We've done all the hard bits now. What I want to do now, though, is I'd like to make my game a little bit better. That's the game pretty much done, but I would like to add a score. So to add a score, we need to make something called a variable. A variable is basically a little bucket that lets us store a bit of information. So because we want it to count how many times the bat hits the apple, um, we need to basically create a little bucket for that score to go into. So on the left hand side, there is a darker orange one called variables, if you click on that. And what we want to do is we want to do the button at the top that says make a variable. If you click that, this menu is going to come up and we're just going to type in score and then tap OK. Once you've done that, you'll see on the top left hand side of your little picture is going to have a button now that says score. It says score and it says zero. Now, at the moment, that isn't going to do anything. Every time I hit the apple, nothing is happening to my score. It's not getting any better. So I need it to actually count. So how we do this is we basically go into our apple again. So make sure you've clicked on your apple or your candy. And in the apple or candy, we're going to do a couple of things here. 
the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the variable or the score to zero at the start of the game. So we're going to do that button there that says set my variable to zero and we're going to drag that in and we're going to put it between the when the flag is clicked and the show at the top. Then we're going to tap the drop down and we're going to tap score because it's the score that we want to set to zero. Now that all that's going to do is make sure it's at zero at the start of the game. But I want it to add one to the score every single time the bat touches the apple. So we want to use the other block that says change my variable by one. And we're going to drag this in and we're going to put it under hide. Now again, my variable is score. So I want to tap that and I want to tap score. Now you could increase this. You could say that every time the bat touches the apple, I want it to gain five points or 10 points or 20 points, whatever you want. I'm just going to do one because I'm just going to try and keep it nice and easy. So now when I play my game, Every time my apple and my bat hits my apple and it disappears, you should see the thing at the top, it should start adding one to my score. Perfect. Everyone happy with that? Okay, the last thing that I want to do is I want to add something to tell me the game is over. I know the screen's going to freeze, but I would like something to speak at the end. So I want it to say game over in my voice at the end of the game. So to do this, we're going to record a sound. So at the top left, you have code, costumes and sound. We're going to click on sounds and there's already a sound in here. So we're going to get rid of that. Then we're going to tap the little button on the left at the bottom. That's a little speaker. And then we're going to tap the little microphone. Then we're going to tap allow and then we are going to record our message. So my message is going to be game over. So I'm going to hit the record button and then say game over. Game over. Then I tap stop recording and I can edit either end of this so I can make the clip longer or shorter. And I can re-record, I can play it to hear it back and I can hit save. So I'm going to hit save just now. And that is my recording made. You can see it there, but it's right now it's called recording one. I'm going to tap that and delete recording one and name it game over so that I know what it is and I can easily find it in my code. I'm then going to go back into code by going along the top and going to that drop down bit that says code beside costumes. And what I need to do now is actually make it play the sound. So first thing you need to make sure is right now I'm in Apple. I want to be in the backdrop section. So tap on backdrops and you'll see this code here. And then I want to go to the sound section, which is the pink menu on the left hand side. And I want to drag the block over that says play sound until done. So you want to make sure that game over is selected from that drop down. So that means at the end of the game, after everything's played through, um, my voice will come up saying game over when it's done. Okay, so let's double check your game is working properly. So if you tap the little button just above the picture to expand it and then tap the green flag, you should be able to start playing your game and you can see what high score you get and make sure everything's working properly with no bugs. So if you've now created your first Halloween game in Scratch. Next thing we want to do is we want to save your game. But before we do that, let's make sure that you've got all the coding right. So this is just a quick um, visual of what your code should look like under each of those things. So the bat, the apple and the backdrop. So can you double check that for me just now, please? Especially if your game is not working the way you think it should be working. Now, if we go back into Scratch, I'm just going to show you how to save these. So at the moment, this is untitled. So at the top beside the share button, we want to tap that where it says untitled and we want to name our game. So I'm just going to call it Halloween Game. Okay, now that's great. But what we want to do is you either want to share it so that other people can um, see it or we want to save it. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back into here and we're going to go to file and we're going to say save a copy because for you, if you don't have an account, um, you can't actually save it onto Scratch. You want to save a copy to your device. So we're going to say save 
or save a copy or save your to your computer. So save to your computer. And then this is going to come up and you're going to tap download. And now if you tap that little arrow at the top right hand side where the downloads are, you can open this, tap share and tap save to files. And then when you're in your files, you can choose where you want to save it and what you want to name it. I'm going to save it on my iPad as Halloween game and then tap done. Now, what this means is that if I ever want to play my game, I will come back on, I'll go into Scratch and I'll go to Create. And you don't have to start from the beginning again. You just go to File and Load from your computer. Which you'll see in a wee second. So Load from your computer and then Choose File. And on my iPad, there's my Halloween game. I tap that, tap OK, and there's my file back again. So make sure if you're ever waiting in between um, doing your game or you want to ever play it again, or you're ever coding something in Scratch that you want to come back to later, if you're not logged in, make sure that you save it. So you go to file, as we said, save to your computer, save the file, make sure that it's somewhere you know where it is and it's named properly. And if it is, you'll be able to reopen it again later. Perfect. Now, because you're all so brilliant at this, I want to give you a challenge. So here are some ideas of things that you could do to improve your game. I think you'll be able to do lots of other things as well. And this is what coders do. They are always thinking of ways they can make things better and play about with the code to see what it can do. And this is called tinkering. So some of the ideas that I have for you is you could change your sprite to a crazy character. You could change the size of your sweets. You could add more sweets with different points. You could change the speed that the sweets appear to make it harder. You could add music in the background. Um, you could add a game over sign at the end or anything else you can think of. And I'm just going to show you a little example of this just now. So I improved my game and I'm going to show you an improved version of our games. Okay, so this is my improved version of the Halloween game. I've implemented most of those things that I said on the challenges there. So if I start to play it and I open it, you can see I've changed the backgrounds and you can also see my apple's really small. My bat has changed to a character that I've drawn instead, which is one of my crazy characters. Every time I get the apple, I get one point. But if I collect the donut, I get more points, okay? Because the donuts only come up every so often. You can also see I've taken backgrounds from online and I've uploaded those instead um, and they're a little bit more Halloween themed which I quite like and you can also see that the things come up a little bit faster as well and at the end it says game over. So you can see that I've made slight little improvements to it and those things are all pretty easy to do but that is your challenge. You can go away and improve your game afterwards. So please go away, try and do even just one thing to make it a little bit better. And please remember, it's not always about getting it right. And it's definitely not about getting it right first time. I love this quote. You don't fail with coding or with anything else. You just find lots and lots of ways that didn't work. So you won't do them that way again. Um, I know this and I'm sure your teachers agree that the solution feels so much better when you've worked hard for it. So keep this in mind and don't give up. Coding is all about resilience and making sure that you go back again and you just keep trying new things and you don't get down if you get things, um, maybe they don't work properly the first time. You're not necessarily getting it wrong. You just need to keep tinkering and playing about with it until it works. So I hope that you've enjoyed this session um, and we'd love to hear any feedback that you have on these types of sessions, especially the ones like this video where you're watching along, not live, um, but maybe with your class at another time. Um, you can get in touch with us um, by email or you can connect with us on X, which is formerly known as Twitter. Um, so my name is Miss McKechnie, so that's my um, Twitter handle there. And then there is our connected Falkirk one as well. We'd love to see 
see what you get up to, how your games look in the end, if you think of any other ways that you can improve them, whether that's as a group, um, individually or as a class as well. Um, and we hope you've enjoyed doing this fun Halloween themed code along. I know I've enjoyed making this. Um, and as I said, please share on Twitter or on X um, anything you do with this. Thank you so much for watching today. We hope you enjoyed your first Halloween Code Along activity. And if you're interested in doing more of these Code Along sessions, then please let us know. The feedback is really important. Thank you for your time. Have a wonderful Halloween. And I hope you manage to tinker with your games and challenge yourselves to improve them in lots of different cool ways. Keep in touch. Thank you. Happy Halloween.